Hello and welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. It is Monday the 20th. I'm hearing noise. Oh, I don't know what's happening. So, Oh, aha. Sorry, guys, for you who are hearing that. It was a commercial. Sorry, my apologies. Wow, that was weird. I've been tinkering with my sound. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I have got. I had, I had a pretty good weekend. I, I did some nerding, trying to rework some sh- stuff on the show. <laughs> Obviously, it's not working perfectly, but we'll get there. I want to say good morning to my co-host, Daniel Fisk Bennett, this morning. Good morning, Daniel. How are you doing? Good morning. Java is currently downloading. <laughs> yes, installing Java. Good, good, good. Good morning. Yeah, I hope you had a good weekend. You sent some photographs. We will talk talk about those here in just a little bit i I, we have also got a guest this morning lloyd evans Uh uh-oh bad chris all right so like i said i was testing stuff this morning i had i was testing a taser app there lloyd so you're getting tasered on the screen (laughs) okay i've been tasered it's certainly the first time i've been tasered live on youtube so yeah yeah I should probably react a bit more, shouldn't I? You you should just jiggle. Just jiggle. It'll be okay. (laughs) Well, so far, you know, actually, just literally just before the show, I was tinkering with things and getting things set up. And um, I have it to where on, and I don't know if I can hear you. I may not. Can you talk for me? Hello, testing one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Whenever I've got it on just uh, Daniel Fisk Bennett, I can taser him. (laughs) <laughs> sound and all because <laughs> i just yeah. i had just built that one so if i'm if it's just me and daniel talking i can same button we'll taser him again because it's convenient for everybody Taking but i have live streaming to a whole new level by introducing an element of torture it seems yeah. <laughs> well well I, I got the idea because we have sci-fi saturday and i've had a couple of people come on i'm like welcome thank you for asking to be on sci-fi i love having you here please tell us about your experience with sci-fi have you seen star trek no i haven't seen star trek have you seen Star Wars? No, I haven't seen Star Wars. That's what the button's all about. Uh, okay. To taser those people. How do you get on a sci-fi show and not have seen Star Trek or Star Wars? It's just one of those things I'm passionate about. It's kind about, of in the description, know? isn't it, really? Like it animal really animal is. Animal. It should be. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I want to say hi again to you. I didn't give you a proper introduction because I got so distracted. Uh, Lloyd is an ex-Jehovah's Witness. He started out under a pseudonym. I'll let him tell us about that in just a minute. He is a, a author and an author, an activist, a filmmaker, and he's also the founder of jwsurvey.org. If you guys are familiar with it, you're probably familiar with his work. Uh, thank you, Lloyd, for joining us. Do you want to tell us real quick about um, yourself? How you? Let's start with who you were before. Who I was? I was the same person. <laughs> oh yes, um, yes. Oh, you mean my Jehovah's Witness background? <laughs> yes. That's a very long story. I don't really know what what to do with that. I was a Jehovah's Witness. I now long, I now no longer am one. Uh, mm-hmm. For a brief period, when I was first exiting the organisation, I did my activism work under a pseudonym because, if you know anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, you know that they punish people not with tasering, um, but with so something much. far, something far worse, which is family estrangement. So they cut you off from your family if you're found to be an apostate so i had to do my activism work under a pseudonym uh, and without showing my face and that pseudonym was john cedars so that's why i've kept the name john cedars as the name of my channel i might Mm -hmm. switch to lloyd evans for my channel name at some point but for now it's just a nice reminder of my journey Gotcha. Yeah. So if those of you who are watching, if you're not sure why down in the that I was a little confused at first when I first saw the other one as well. And then I, I figured it all out. I figured out who you were. And if I understand, I've had other people on the show who've had experiences with the Jehovah's Witness organization that was a little, I want to say scary. Um, mm. But so I can understand why you'd want to go under a pseudonym. <laughs> Let's see. Best name ever. Let me all right, before I go too far. I want to say hello to everybody in the chat. Our, our damnation, the damnation, as we like to call them. Good morning, Trina Deluca, and best name ever, Kristen. Nice to have you as always. Uh, Ethan is here this morning. He's also my co-host on Thursdays. He's a lot of fun. He he's got a channel called the Your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist. I'm sorry, Your Friendly Neighborhood Atheist channel, and he does a lot of streams over there, black activism and all kinds of atheism and stuff like that. He's wonderful. Uh, let's see, Cindy Plaza is here. Good morning, Daniel Bennett, of course. Paul Camish, nice to have you. The EA Show, Justin, nice to have you watching. Uh, Derek Cruz is with us. Phil Lister is watching. 
Edward Chiriach, nice to have you with us this morning. So it, it, all you wonderful people, thank you for joining us. I hope you had a wonderful and safe weekend. So now back to Lloyd here in a little bit. Like I said, I've got some images that we're going to talk to talk with about with Daniel Fisk Bennett about because he's been passionate about these comments lately and I've got them prepped up. I don't know if the tech is going to work or not, <laughs> but we'll see. But yeah, we'll find out. But we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Uh, oh, oh, I want to say hi to everybody on Facebook. We we streamed a lot of pages on Facebook. There's a lot of uh, Facebook page watchers. We don't really get to chat with them or, or interact with them as much. I apologize for that someday. But good morning to all you guys. Good morning to the YouTube reviewer who has to go back and watch every show. Good morning to you. Uh, Epileptic Skeptic, hope you had a good weekend. So, Lloyd... Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, do you want to, you've got the Jehovah's Witness.org going on. Oh, <laughs> before I, before I forget. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Ethan, it's Wednesdays now. You're right. Um, I, before I forget, Lloyd, Kristen had a question for you. Uh, she's, you may know her. She's, she's kind of everywhere. She wants to know if you, uh, she says, could Lloyd please do the con Warley scream except with Mallard? <laughs> so you're on the spot, brother. <laughs> and she did it. It's yeah. Her. Yeah. So, so she's referring to obviously the famous scene in Wrath of Khan where Kirk is mm -hmm. stranded on a, on a, a hollowed out moon uh, by Khan. And uh, he, he says, Khan! And um, I want, I can't remember the context now, but I did something similar with Dave Worley. So apparently I need to do it with your name, do I? Mama! I guess so. There you go. There we go. That's wonderful. We'll get a little clip. I'm sure Kristen will send us a clip. That'll sure. be fantastic. I'm sure that won't come back and haunt me years from now. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I did. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the internet, brother. It's living forever. I uh, I did a video on there. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, I don't remember which one it is. It's some, some kind of red Shakespeare with a redneck. And in it, I did my own little con scream. I really need to scrub that from the internet as best I can. So. <laughs> Tell us about what you've got going on now. Well, actually, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, you you've got a current series of videos. If you'll tell us about it, because we actually interrupted you this morning, mm -hmm. your your process to do the show. So, if you want to tell us about your videos, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm in the process of filming uh, rebuttals. So, Jehovah's Witnesses every year have their conventions and when I was a Jehovah's Witness it was basically just a case of going to a sports arena for three days and being bored to tears by talks. Now what's happened in recent years is Jehovah's Witnesses have decided to spruce up these talks by interspersing them with propaganda videos that are designed to be highly manipulative and coercive and to basically um, evoke emotion in making people feel as though they need to be in lockstep with the organization. So uh, this has been happening now for the last few years, but this year in particular, it's going up another notch because of COVID-19. They can't actually have the conventions as normal. So, that, so they're releasing the entire convention as like a virtual convention. And they're doing it in bits and pieces. So I've already done the rebuttal to the first part that got dropped on the website on jw.org. That's for the Friday morning. I'm now working on my rebuttal for the Friday afternoon. Um, the first video, by the way, was two hours, 35 minutes long. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, as you can imagine, in a morning's worth of propaganda. So this rebuttal video I'm doing is going to be very long. Um, but some people find it interesting. In fact, the first video has is on 40,000 views so far. So even though it's a very long, in-depth analysis, people seem to appreciate having it all untangled and unpicked and basically um, rendered inert from its very manipulative uh, elements. Um, real quick, I want to explain. There was some comments about the the lag. There's a little bit of lag. <laughs> yeah, James Walton. There's still Jehovah's Witnesses. There's, there's still a lot of them, by the way. There's a lot of lag. I want to explain to folks who may not know, you are in Croatia. So there's a lot of delay, especially for people 
Yeah, we've just got a particularly lot of delay today. So no worries about that. We'll get through it. Yeah, there's quite a few. As a matter of fact, we had um, Chris Shelton on the show not long back. Isn't he an ex-Jehovah's Witness as well? Or am I remembering? No, he's a, an ex-Scientologist. Oh, that's he's right. an ex-Scientologist. You know, I get that kind of those particular ones screwed up in my head on occasion. So <clears throat> how long have you been doing this video series again? Uh what the conventions well i've been doing convention mm -hmm. rebuttals since 2016 every year really um yeah and what about your channel your youtube channel how long have you had it so the youtube channel began in 2012 and that kind of started out as like an extension to my existing activism work which was mostly on a blog um i i founded the website jwsurvey.org and i was mostly writing for that and the guy who helped me set it up, um, it was a particular lawsuit, on, uh, the Candace Conti lawsuit on child abuse. He said, uh, Lloyd, there isn't really anything on YouTube regarding this particular lawsuit. You're good at videos. Why don't you do a video? So I was like, oh, okay. So I, I did a video for it without appearing because I was still kind of undercover at that time. And I literally just wrote a script and had someone else read it and then did like a, a photo montage. And that became one of my earliest videos. Um, and since then, the YouTube channel has has overtaken everything. So obviously, JW Survey is still there. And there's a fantastic team who are writing articles and supporting people who need help. But I am predominantly now mostly doing um, the, the videos. And I obviously, I've written a couple of books as well. Do you want to tell us about your books? <laughs> I happen to notice them. It does say, and because you know, the next question in prepare in your mind. Them. I'm sorry. I don't, know, I don't know how to boil an 800 page book down to a few sound bites, to be honest. Oh, um, but I, yeah, you'll do it. You'll go, This is my book. This is, <laughs> and I'll be uh, on to the next question. <laughs> you could say, This is my magnum opus. This is The Reluctant Apostate, which is um, kind of. It's kind of a, a memoir that's interspersed with information about the Jehovah's Witness religion, and it's written predominantly for non-Jehovah's Witnesses, but also interspersed with parts where I'm talking directly to Jehovah's Witnesses on certain issues. So I've kind of tried to cover all bases with it. But as you can tell, it's a thick book. I didn't intend for it to be this thick. It's just that there was a lot to write about because I went into yeah. Jehovah's Witness history and how the religion came to be as it is today, which turned out to be more complicated than I than I thought when I first started writing it. So there's that book, and there's also How to Escape from Jehovah's Witnesses, which is a much shorter book. It's kind of like a how-to guide for those who are wanting to get out of the religion, which is actually quite a complicated process depending on what your situation is. So those are my two books. 800 pages. I, uh, I kind of hope there's a lot of pictures. Is there any, do, there do, are does it pictures, come with actually. colors or do you have to buy your own crayons? <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, black and white pictures, but there are pictures in it. Yeah, oh, every now and then. Yeah, black and white. Yeah. See, I can color those in on my own. Exactly. Uh, I can even hard fist black and white ones. That's awesome. Phil Lister, uh, somebody in our chat says that he has read uh, some your book. He didn't say mm. which one. Was it the the reluctant apostate one, Phil? Let me know in the chat there. And James Walton, we have somebody here who claims to be an ex-atheist, now a Jehovah's Witness in the chat. I don't know. I, you know, never seen him before that I remember. I don't really know. You know, you never know with the chat sometimes. <laughs> so I thought I'd kind of let you know about that. Let me see what else is going on over here. And how long have you been at this? Um, Lloyd, how long is this? Since... 2011. So 2011 was 2011. when we founded JW Survey. Um, okay. So yeah, that was your, been, your deal. So next year will be 10 years. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Been at it. So you were Jehovah's Witness. Um, you became an atheist. I'm, I'm presuming an atheist or a non-believer of some fashion. And it was was there something specific that made you decide to go and become? an activist against your former faith or was it just a happenstance of this, what you told me, told us about the founding of the, that show? Well, in other words, what I'm saying is, was there some kind of trauma that, or during leaving that made you decide you wanted to become an atheist against the old religion that you used to follow? 
there's quite a lot there. I, I think I think in order to fully understand why someone would become an activist against this religion, you probably need to understand what this religion does to people and the profound ways in which it affects people. It affects your relationships with others. It affects your view of the world. It gives you an existential dread of being destroyed at Armageddon if you displease a very vengeful God who intends to wipe out basically the Earth's population apart from a few million Jehovah's Witnesses any moment. Mm. Um, it, it really, it, it's difficult to... It's difficult to um, uh, to exaggerate just how bad the damage is from this group. So, uh, not everyone can get involved in activism. Obviously, who uh, gets out of this religion? I think for most people, for the majority, um, it's a success. It's an achievement just to get out. Never mind then trying to help others out. But in my own case, I felt I had something to contribute. I had something to say. It began as more of a cathartic exercise in explaining my, the process of my own indoctrination and, and de-indoctrination and some of the arguments that helped me and trying to share them with others. And it just became a case of, oh, well, this actually works. People seem to be relating to this and it seems to be helping people. And as of now, there's also a lot of support for what I do. So I'm currently on mm. like 500 patrons who are making it possible for me to do this as like a full-time job so um, wonderful. yeah there's there are there are any number of reasons why someone would would react uh, very with a lot of hurt and pain and outrage to what gets done to them by abusive groups like jehovah's witnesses right right well have you have you <clears throat> It's, I guess it's kind of hard to gauge, especially in book form. Have you had a lot of people tell you their stories of how you've helped them leave the Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses? Or I do get um, messages, yeah, emails. Um, it's actually got to the point where we need like a team. Granted, not every email is to me or about me, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm fairly inundated, or the team at JW Survey is fairly inundated with people who are reaching out to us because um, they have found the resources that we provide very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. In some cases, we're dealing with people who have actually been physically out of the organization for many years. Perhaps they were disfellowshipped over some sin, but they've stayed over the course of perhaps decades, they've stayed in the mindset of, but it's still true and I'm going to be destroyed at Armageddon any day now. And mm -hmm. only by reading a JW survey article or watching one of my videos, the pennies finally drops and they've realized, actually, I was being lied to and exploited and now I can breathe. Now I can stop living in dread of imminent destruction. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you have any particular kind of threats whenever you left? Were you threatened or ostracized well, in any way? I wasn't way? just threatened. I was punished. Th this is okay. what I'm trying to get across, is that okay. you're punished for leaving. I, I continue course. to feel that punishment in the form of um, my father oh. not being a part of my life. My father yeah. hasn't met either of my two daughters, both of whom were born since I left. Um, and that is obviously um, that has ramifications with them, of course, because they don't know their granddad. Um, so everyone's punished who who wants to leave. If you if you stop believing, it's possible to uh, carry on a pretense or to stay quiet about it in some cases. But even in those cases, there have been examples of elders actually hounding people at their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, because they've heard that something's been said or something's been done that the organization doesn't approve of. And they've, they've literally turned up on people's doorsteps to um, start judicial actions against them. So uh, it, <laughs> it's, yeah. again, hard to express yeah. just how Orwellian this organization is. I guess you have to watch my channel and uh, yeah. <laughs> the stuff I cover, you know? I'm kind of, I wasn't, I, I don't, I, it's one of those things that's so far removed from my mind. I don't consider it terribly often, but whenever I hear about it, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that stuff goes on in this day and age. Um, I had a, ch a question for you here. 
Um, well, actually, I've got I've got this for you. I want to ask: Were you were indoctrinated as a child as a Jehovah's Witness? So your is that correct? Your family was Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. before you were born. So that your yeah. So my dad, the, the organization first made landfall on my dad's side in 1953. They managed to catch my grandma at a time when both of her parents had died. So she was easy pickings for a group turning up saying, hey, wouldn't you like to live in a world with no more death where you can welcome back your loved ones? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was on dad's side. On mum's side, she had a very traumatic uh, few young womanhood, you could say, where lots of bad things happened and the organization, the witnesses love bombed her essentially um, and gave her the sense of community mm. that she needed. Mm. And so when I, when I was born, it was two very, very believing parents who raised me to be as devout and believing as they were. And where did the chinks in that armor come from? The chinks in my armor. Well, yeah, well, in the, in your beliefs, you know, because apparently you were well indoctrinated. One of my the reasons why I didn't stay a Christian was because I wasn't properly indoctrinated, or that's what I always claim. Sounds like you were, but you broke free. Yeah, I first started my initial my initial doubts first manifested themselves when I was about nineteen or twenty. Um, there'd been a convention. I, I I've explained conventions. Um, they mm -hmm. used to be. Uh, events at which publications would be released. That's less of the case now, but back then it used to be at every convention they would release perhaps several publications, maybe a book and maybe a brochure and maybe something else. And at this particular convention, they released a new book on the prophecy of Daniel. And I was very excited about this because I felt this was an opportunity to get right on top of prophecy at the time that the book had been released. So I'd be understanding it at the same time as everyone else. So I took the book home, devoured it, and to begin with, found it very compelling. But then towards the end, I just noticed that there were things, there were explanations given that just didn't make logical sense. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time, something very scary happened. And I found myself disagreeing with a group of leaders who I'd been convinced couldn't be wrong. And so that created a lot of cognitive dissonance to begin with. Uh, but I, I couldn't bring myself to just go along with it. I had to at least internally recognize that I didn't uh, agree, even if I had to pretend that I agreed. Um, so I was sort of on the road already at sort of 19 or 20. But then when I was 21, my mother died. And the way... Jehovah's Witnesses respond to death is to say, well, your loved one isn't really dead. They're still alive in Jehovah's memory. And if you want to see them again in the future paradise, what you need to do is do everything that the organization expects of you. So that gave me even more motivation than normal to kind of, there's a song in the Book of Mormon, Turn It Off. Uh, it's a little bit like that. You, you, you turn off these doubts, you you consciously try to not think about them and you, you put them to one side and don't think about them. And then it wasn't until many years later when I would got married and I moved to Croatia. I met my wife through the religion because I attended a special class at which um, one of the guys was from her remote part of uh, Europe in Croatia. And so we went to we went to his uh, country for our reunion and that's how I met her. So I ended up moving to Croatia with my wife and then all of a sudden the language barrier kicked in and I was attending meetings and not fully understanding what was being said. Um, and that just gave me the space I needed to think, hang on a minute, what do you really believe? You know, you're, you're being expected to believe all this, but what do you really believe? And it was a, a case of just a few months where I actually ended up saying to my wife, actually in a letter, because it was too emotional for me to say it to her face to face. I said, I think I'm going to end up leaving this this religion. And how did she respond to that? Well, it was mortifying. It's the last thing she yeah. wanted to hear. She'd even told me when we first got married that she would love me always. The only thing that would ever stop her from loving me 
would be mm. if I stopped loving Jehovah. So I knew that that was uh, an issue. And it creates mm-hmm. a lot of stress in the marriage. Some marriages don't survive it. Some, In some cases, when a husband or a wife wakes up, the other spouse doesn't, and it ends up splitting mm-hmm. the marriage. You can imagine if children are involved, it gets even more messy. So I yeah. had what I now think is pretty close to, if not an actual nervous breakdown. Um, but fortunately, I came out of that. And fortunately, about a year after me waking up, my wife woke up as well. Good, good, good. Yeah, that was kind of my next question was how how she handled it. And then, you know, are you, are you I guess I got to ask, I hate to be too personal. Are y'all together still to this day? Yeah. Well, yeah, she's awesome. uh, she's upstairs at the moment. Yeah, we've got two, two kids, as <laughs> I said, uh, who don't know their granddad. Um, right. But we have a very happy life here. Actually, we do live, it must be said, in the same building as some Jehovah's Witnesses because <laughs> um, her parents are still believing witnesses. Mm. Uh, so it's been a very challenging thing for them as well. And obviously, it's one thing for your son-in-law to stop believing or to be disfellowshipped. It's another thing entirely for your son-in-law to become one of the most well-known, um, quote-unquote, opposers of your religion um so it's been difficult for them it must be said but what i like about what i really appreciate about them is that they seem to have like some jehovah's witnesses not allowed what the organization expects to overpower their own basic humanity i see that that's happened in my dad um Mm -hmm. he could if he wanted to technically talk to me because it's not a disfellowshipping offence to speak to a relative who is disfellowshipped. You will no longer be exemplary, though, so you won't have any privileges. You will be stripped of any privileges that you enjoy. And I think that with my dad, he values his privileges too much hmm. to have um, to continue uh, his relationship with his own flesh and blood. But I think with my wife's parents, they're, they're just too loving, you know? And especially when it comes to our kids, we've had one or two disagreements when it comes to indoctrination because we've been very firm from the beginning that Mm -hmm. our children aren't to be indoctrinated. And there have been a few awkward moments where we found out that conversations have been had and uh, they've tried to say something to Jessica. Um, But we've managed to keep on top of it so far. And and Jessica knows full well what the situation is. She's now... Uh, six years old so I she's at that age where I can explain things basically to her and Mm -hmm. and she understands roughly I've explained things to her in terms that she will understand and she understands that um, her grandparents are basically being lied to but we should still be loving and we should still be kind to them because they don't know so yeah yeah it really gets complicated when family gets involved Mm. like that I didn't, I kind of have, I'm a little ostracized from parts of my family because of my lack of faith and other, other things. Um, Daniel Fisk Bennett here, my co-host for today, for Mondays, he was a a cradle atheist. Both of his parents were atheists. Daniel? Yeah. How you doing? Oh man, it is. It is still Still early. Yeah. I I was trying not to space out too much with the uh, conversation. (laughs) It's it's just like, wow, it's the time difference. It's, yes. <laughs> well, I was trying to give you a little time to get the coffee installed before uh, before oh, I hit you up with too many hard oh, questions yeah. and whatnot. You hear that dial-up internet going in my head, you know, <laughs> that yeah. old AOL kind of feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel Fiskman is uh, one. Of, he's the founder of the Atheist Against Pseudoscience Nonsense group on on YouTube and Facebook, and I think you have a web page as well. Is that yeah, right? The Scientific the scientific atheist. And so that's what he's got today. Actually, he wanted to talk briefly about some things, uh, some comments. Do you have a few moments, Daniel? Do you want to talk about these comments? I've got the pictures ready to go on my sort of okay system. Okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah. t- let's queue up that picture. Uh, I got, okay, I got, here we uh, go. I got exc- exclusive permission to use these photos. Um, my father uh, in his retirement now is a professional photographer. So, Oh, so currently, okay. we have Comet Neowise coming up. I mean, it's happening right now. 
And Comet Neowise is a comet that was discovered in, I think it was early December or so. And, oh, excuse me, it was early March. And this, this bad boy uh, was zipped around really close to the sun when it was first uh, discovered. And we didn't know if it was going to actually make it uh, since it was passing so close. And to, uh, lucky for us, it actually survived the journey around the sun and is zipping by us currently right now at about 100 and uh, what was it? 100 and uh, oh boy, let me think. It's, uh, I think it was 100 and uh, oh, here we go. It was 100. Let me look this up real fast. Very fast. Ah, here we go. It's very fast. 199. No, sorry. There we go. All right. 123,743 miles per hour. This guy is zipping. This thing is hauling. Absolutely. Now, when was this one first discovered? It was in Do March. You know? was it, it was in March. It, we, we kind of discovered it a little bit on the later end side um, when it came screaming on in. And now that it's passing by us, we're able to get a nice good view of it. So if you want to see this comet, you could still see it right now uh, at nighttime. If you find the Big Dipper, look for the Big Dipper and then look at the horizon and kind of find a little uh, a middle point in between there. And if you do not have a bunch of light pollution in your area, you'll be able to see a star with a fuzzy ta- a star with a fuzzy tail on it. And it should be in the sky uh, I think starting the 22nd, it'll start fading, but it'll be in the sky for a little while um, for the rest of the month. So it's it's, it's okay. pretty remarkable. It's very beautiful. Um, I, I got to uh, go screw around looking at it uh, a couple days ago. I, I took some pictures, uh, even with my phone, I was able to take pictures of it. So it, it's, it is bright enough to actually even take pictures with your phone. That's awesome. I, it's been a long time since I did anything with a. When I was a kid, I used to really be into those kind of things. What were we going to say, Lloyd? Oh, nothing. Just uh, impressive photos. I, uh, I, I'm starting to do a little bit more stargazing myself. Um, recently, I've been because uh, there is obviously there's there are websites that you can go on that will tell you. You know, if you are an amateur like me and you don't know all the constellations and that kind of thing, they'll tell you, you can put in your location on the planet and it will tell you what to look for in the sky and what it will look like. So I've recently been watching um, Jupiter and Saturn um, from where I am. And uh, we were recently on the coast. Um, we, we drove like two and a half hours to the Croatian coast for our anniversary. And um, I have an app on my phone telling me when the ISS is passing over. Uh, so we managed to really? go out on, one night on the balcony. It doesn't always work, obviously, because sometimes, if it's a cloudy night, you're just not going to see it. But we did actually manage to get out on one clear evening and see it flying over. So that was very special. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, have you seen the app? I have a question for you here in the chat, but I got, I got to do this or I'll forget. Have you? There's a Google... Google Planets or something. Have you seen that app? You can put on your phone and you can look around and see the sun is here. And I haven't, but I, I, I'll, now that you've told me about it, I'll be checking it out because uh, <sighs> yeah, Google yeah. Stars or something like that. It's very cool. You can look mm. anywhere. You can see where all these things are currently. It's amazing. I really enjoy it. The Brilliant. question for you is: uh, We're going to switch. We'll get back to your your ex Jehovah's Witness adventures in a bit. But the question is: How has the YouTube moderation switching to Twitch been working out for you? Oh, for that, that's the question. Yes, <laughs> that well, is the question. Um, I, I I didn't really do any moderation on on Twitch. I've only used it briefly while I was banned from live streaming. Because what happened was. Mm. Uh, we we decided to live stream a stream of a uh, a watchtower event without their permission, and they actually shut down the broadcast while we were doing mm. it. And I got hit with a a strike, a copyright strike, and I was banned from live streaming. So 
my way around it was to stream to Twitch uh, because mm. I, I I realized that not everyone likes to use Facebook. But since I've been allowed back on YouTube, I haven't really been uh, using Twitch. But uh, when it comes to moderating comments, I do have um, like patrons who help me moderate and some JW survey team members have moderation rights so that they can um, get rid of any undesirables that may pop up. But to be fair, uh, I have some very good viewers, so I don't get that many uh, problems mm. with people trolling. Gotcha. That was funny, Daniel. You see, you say they've been pretty quiet out there on the <laughs> flat earth or front. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it, you know, Sorry, are you telling me the earth isn't flat? Are we going to debate them? <laughs> Tell your lies to someone else. This is actually spherical. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah. That's crazy oh, talk. It's, it's banana okay. shapes. Yeah. 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 Um, well, you know, I've seen those things where they believe all the rest of them are round. It's just Earth is flat. I've, I've heard that oh, as okay. well. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, no, it's, it's as someone who specializes in human stupidity. <laughs> As we, are, we are the celestial we're the celestial tennis racket sur surrounded by tennis balls is that it <laughs> oh, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing watching the mental gymnastics that these people go through and um I, I've, I've been able to actually hit these people with a using a local phenomenon that is unique to the area that i'm at um mount rainier you know big beautiful massive fourteen thousand foot mountain right i mean this this not a small mountain by any means and it's you know, always uh has this brilliant white color from the glaciers that are all over it and it starts off you know the altitude uh at at literally sea level so i mean this thing just jets right up it's one of the i think it's not, uh, the 28th most most prominent peak in the united states and being the Puget Sound is literally sea level because in Washington we had the ocean come very far inland. You have these very tall mountains right next to the ocean. I mean, it looks like something out of the Lord of the Rings. It's, I mean, it's gorgeous. I love it out here. But back to the topic. Mount Rainier, you'll notice when we go into twilight, will still be glowing. And everything else will start getting dark. And you will have uh, street lights on and everything. You, you're, uh, it's dark enough that you need a flashlight. But if you look at Mount Rainier, it's still glowing in the sunset. And you can see on Mount Rainier, if you, if you think of this as the peak, the shadow of the horizon traveling up Mount Rainier. And getting these flat earthers to try to explain that, they will completely just, nope, they will leave that subject. <laughs> because it's like, yeah, there's only one way that could happen. And it's because there's a curve on the earth <laughs> and you have a high peak that, that reaches above that curve. And down here, you know, where the observer would be at sea level, it is dark. You're already in that shadow. Of the sunset, but because of Mount Rainier's prominence, you're able to see that it it has a a moving shadow that goes past sunset. So it's it's funny. I've I've used that as an example a few times to to just get flat earthers on a very practical, observable example. And, you know, this is where your standard rage quit happens, where they're like, ah, I'm not listening, you know, whatever, I have my beliefs. It's like, uh-huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. True, true. Yeah. Hey, uh, Lloyd, I have a question, another question for you from the chat real quick. Uh, I enjoy the bounce around from astronomy to... Uh, the odd question is, oh, brother, and I, I didn't even get who said it. Let me let me look. I got I to give them credit for this because it's, you know, all right, Russell Franklin asked... Odd question, but did you ever feel that you were not doing your civic duty in the Jehovah's Witness religion, not signing up for service, selective service and stuff like that? Does that make sense to you? Or you, does that help? 
I did. It's not that whether, whether I felt I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it. But if the question mm. is, did I feel guilty for not participating <laughs> in politics or anything like that? Then, of course, no, I didn't because. I felt that God required me to take this position. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that they uh, must be neutral from Satan's doomed system of things. And this involves uh, not playing any role in politics and certainly being um, pacifists. So, and you know, there are, there are arguments to be made from a, from a biblical point of view for pacifism, because, of course, Jesus said those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So I don't think that's exclusively a JW thing. I think pacifism extends beyond Jehovah's Witnesses. But hmm. in any case, um, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, you obviously have to believe that yours is the one true religion. And if your religion asks you to do something, even if it's very controversial or objectionable or even threatens your own life as in the case with blood transfusions you just do it you know, yeah that, that kind of go ahead daniel oh i was about to say that was one thing that i fought for really hard and i'm still fighting for up here is uh, that loophole that other religions like uh, jehovah's witnesses and scientologists use to deny treatment to their children or vulnerable adults um in washington state i've been fighting for this bill hb 1376 which closes that loophole one of the uh, some of the diseases and disorders that people grow up with uh, or they're born with uh, could be treated with some relatively simple processes uh, like a blood transfusion and when parents deny their children this, they could suffer needlessly and, and even die as mm -hmm. a result. You know, a child cannot provide consent when it comes down to medical care. The parent can, though. And, you know, if the parent, you know, they're an adult. They're, you know, in the United States, you are free to believe whatever BS you want. But a child doesn't have that choice. And a child needs to be able to give the, be given that opportunity to actually grow up and make those informed decisions by themselves. Mm. And if they want to deny themselves medical care, at that point, they're an adult. They can make that decision. But a child cannot. And mm. we've been, I've been really trying to get that loophole closed. And um, a quick, funny little story. Um, there is the... DC rep, uh, Washington DC representative la uh, actually flew over here to, to Washington state when we were last hearing this uh, having a hearing on this bill and I was actually in front of the state congress uh, in a hearing with one of the representatives from FFRF who was helping us with this and this individual this pompous crack uh, you know quack crank whatever you excuse me crank um really did not like me um <laughs> and Surprise. i was really railing against the dangers of you know what that loophole was utilizing and uh listing how much preventable suffering and death would be uh, mediated with this if this bill was accepted and I used real examples of harm that their cult uh, was responsible for. And this individual was just glaring at me, just super mad. And I wasn't going to have it. Well, later on in the hallway, I went to the bathroom and I, I was walking back and he tried to kind of pretty much intersect me in the hallway. And he was starting to, try to denigrate me just like do you know who i am do you know you know do you know what i'm capable you know what who, what i what position in the you know church that i have and, and i'm and i i couldn't help was like to explain to them was like you know your position may scare people in your community but you have no power or authority over someone like me i don't recognize it you don't scare me 
you if it were up to me you'd be in jail for what you were trying to promote and that led to him almost challenging me to a fist fight in the hallway <laughs> really I, yeah i just can't believe it and the irony was a little bit a little while later that dummy uh was on one of those it was on that cruise ship that had that measles outbreak oh and really I, and i want to ask him so bad how his cruise was <laughs> with that measles outbreak because those idiots don't believe in vaccinations i remember they had a measles outbreak down in texas because uh, which church was it kept telling them not to go get uh for, i can't remember who it was now but the, yeah they had a big outbreak down there and <clears throat> caused uh, well, all kinds of problems scientologists like to uh have little measles outbreaks. That's, that, that, that oh, oh specifically. Gotcha. Yeah, well, it's for some reason, it's just they, their specific brand of stupidity seems to garner <laughs> that kind of you know, predictable disaster. <laughs> Absolutely. But, Let me uh, say yeah. hi to... I, I just want to say hi to a few people who've shown up. Uh, let's see. I lost it. Oh, well, there's Casa Mufasa, Phil Lister, and Paul Camish, Dragons in Genesis. Jason has showed up for just Dragons in Genesis. If you guys are not familiar with his podcast, get over and check it out. This guy drops a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of fun. I have a question here for you, Lloyd, from Miss Kristen. She's a fountain of questions and wonderful questions they are, <clears throat> especially in this case, because I'm a big fur baby fan. We think we heard a kitty. Do you have a kitty? Is there a kitty? Not here, but upstairs. Yeah, we've got a cat called Olivia. Uh, quite a quite a young cat. So yeah, I do have one. Okay, so you do have a cat <laughs> and a dog, Daniel, and a dog. Are you? Are, 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 let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. The the cat is the wife's, and the dog is yours. Is that how things work for you guys? Well, when we first got the dog, it was our dog uh, collectively, um, but then it sort of got taken over by diana's parents because it just turned oh. out easier for it to live downstairs than because we live in the upstairs apartment and it's a small mm. dog and it finds it difficult to get up and down the stairs um mm. but now we've got a, do a a cat who basically lives in the apartment and that's made the dog want to be upstairs more because the, the dog's fascinated by the cat and just wants to be its friend and the cat is obviously mm. instinctively very <laughs> distrustful of the dog so there's this kind of standoff between the two it's quite interesting <laughs> I imagine it is. I have a, I have another question. Did you, did any of you catch X cult baby's video about how they left the Jehovah's witness cult yesterday? I did not. Did, did you? I'm, I'm it? bogged down with convention videos at the moment, but it is on my watch list. It's Understood, definitely want to, yes. want to catch that. Yeah. Um, are you planning any more collaborations with X cult baby? Definitely. Definitely. Good. I think they are a fantastic advocate for atheism and for the ex-Jehovah's ex Witness movement and also a very eloquent uh, way of expressing themselves. So I'm very, looking, very much looking forward to having them on the channel. Hmm. I need to invite them myself. I've been a bad mm -hmm. man. Let me ask you, since we've got it, I, I made a note because we touched on it earlier. I, I do a series of videos called, um, well, I did. I haven't done one in forever, but uh, Quickie with the Skeptic. And then uh, part of the Quickie with the Skeptic series is about people who kill other people with faith or use their faith to kill their children. I did a, the video about this one guy selling woo, and these people believe the woo more than they believe the real doctor, so they let their child die. Got a couple of stories about people who didn't take their doctor to their child to the doctor eat to let it there was one couple who let their child starve to death yet they were farmers and in their interview they're talking about how they disagree with modern medicine and all this stuff and the guy's wearing his glasses I'm like wait wait you're farmers you you believe enough in science to wear glasses and yet you're gonna let your kids starve to death and go through these other things yeah, there's actually is that another uh, thing uh oh called miracle minerals it's, it's effectively industrial bleach and mm. it, it hides in a religious cult that is out there i'm i, I can't remember the idiot that started mm. it but yeah they they these guys will claim that it cures damn near anything obviously um this crank that hawks this crap um, or cranks in this case sometimes mm. and they, they will say it uh, cures things like autism and down syndrome and everything 
And I remember there, I was talking to uh, Hemet Meta from Katheos. He helped me uh, I uh, show that there was a convention that these nuts, uh, they, they uh, reserved a, a, a convention room in Leavenworth, Washington. And I, I wanted to make sure I, I, you know, I blew that one up as much as possible. And, you know, the, the internet just went after the, the hotel that was hosting these jerks. And there is actually a video that they have on their little w website of a woman in Africa giving a cup of this crap, this industrial bleach effectively, to a small infant. You see the infant drink it and just start, you know, wailing it. And, and it's like, well, that is just absolutely horrifying. You just gave industrial bleach to a child. And you, when, when people, when this stuff goes through your intestines like a, like a like a steamroller. Actually, I must contradict you there because uh, I've heard it advised pr on a presidential level that sometimes household products do work in combating uh, <laughs> pandemics. And if the president's going to advise it, of course, it's true. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Yeah, right. in, in, inject bleach and uh, <laughs> and uh, disinfectant. Right. The one that got me was. Um, was the whole inserting a UV light in, in, into the blood. Um, it's, uh, yeah. If anyone... Who hasn't wanted to do that? Oh, yeah. No, if anybody yeah. has... Ever, uh, no, uh, as someone who knows a little bit about radiation, um, in radiation burns, you would call them effectively a, like a, a three-dimensional sunburn. Yeah. And you put any UV under subdermally... Uh, or just in inside of your body, you're just gonna cook the insides of your body. Like it's just so bad. I just couldn't believe that kind of stupidity that I heard. That it's like this, this, this has to be illegal some in some way. But yeah, you know, damn, surely damn it is. The freedom, the freedom of speech in the United States is a is a two is a two way street. So well, I mean it. A person like the president can cause real harm when they are a charlatan, and you, there it was even more sad when, after Trump made those statements, they had a bunch of calls to poison control about yeah. people trying to ingest ingest disinfectant and other stuff in order to uh, prevent infections from COVID-19. There's also uh, a, a very <laughs> highly popularized case of, uh, apparently it was a, a man and a woman. I guess they were, they figured out the ingredients that were in, was in a particular type of aquarium cleaner. And <clears throat> they ingested this cleaner stuff, material after Trump had his famous little <laughs> well one of his many famous stupid moments on live camera with the c you know with the cdc and everything during the, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic and unfortunately um the husband died as mm. a result and I, I i find it sad that we cannot hold trump culpable right. to some degree to this because he he has a responsibility to this nation well, yes and if i may I, I had a question i was going on a question so we're talking about the quickie with the skeptic and people using faith to kill people and then we was going on about uh you know the woo i, I mentioned the woo and you took over and started talking about all that that's great that was a wonderful story what i wanted to ask though was have you lloyd experienced in your experience with um Jehovah's Witnesses and that cult, did you experience a lot of people suffering because of things like not taking their medicine or because they didn't want to get a blood transfusion, specifically blood transfusions stick out? So dying for faith, that's where the question, you know, is essentially you're putting your life on your on the line to demonstrate your faith. Did you experience a lot of that? 
see any know, family I've, or I've go through relatives. those problems? I've got relatives. Uh, Diana's, um, she probably won't thank me for mentioning this, but I'll mention it anyway. Um, Diana's granddad, um, he was in his 70s and he had leukemia. Mm-hmm. And the treatment involved blood transfusions, and he turned them down and he died. Now, really? would his life have been greatly prolonged in his 70s if he'd taken the blood transfusions? Who knows? But we'll never get to know, will we? Because the whole point is he turned them down because of his beliefs as a Jehovah's Witness. And just mm-hmm. hanging on to what Daniel was saying earlier about children um i just encourage your viewers to check out a video on my channel called the martyrdom of jared scepter which is about one child who uh, died in i think 1990 or 1991 thereabouts um because his parents were jw's and they refused uh transfusion for him obviously he Mm. refused it too but he was a minor and therefore not in position to know what he was talking about or asking for Um, and he died. And to add insult to injury, um, last year, Watchtower produced a uh, highly uh, manipulative and coercive video propaganda celebrating his death. Really? And making light of it by saying, oh, but look at how his parents were blessed and they received these privileges and now they're so happy and all that kind of thing. So it was really very sickly. And I would also encourage your viewers to check out a recent video I did called Angels of Death, because mm-hmm. more people need to understand the role of <clears throat> HLC elders. So when a Jehovah's Witness, uh, including a Jehovah's Witness child, is hospitalized and blood is an issue, um, the religion will dispatch elders called HLC elders, hospital liaison committees, Uh, whose role is to make sure that the blood ban is followed through on. So they don't just leave it to witnesses to decide for themselves in those situations, because when you're in a life or death situation, it's very likely that you will change your mind if your life is literally on the line. But if there's an elder by your bedside watching your every move, and 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 you know that you'll be disassociated, if mm-hmm. you're found to have willingly and unrepentantly accepted blood, things change and people die because of these, yeah. I call them angels of death going to hospitals. So please do check out that video. Sounds like a great vid. Yeah. And you know, Daniel, I want to ask you about what you were talking about earlier. Was it, was that colloidal silver? Was that what you were talking about? That industrial bleach? Oh, no, is that different? Miracle, no, miracle, miracle minerals is, is the name that. You oh, use. that's, that was the actual name. Yeah. Collo- Let me write colloidal that silver is uh, Alex Jones's little crazy thing, um, which has opens up a whole nother can of worms elsewhere. I mean, it, it mm. crap. It turns your skin blue. You look like a almost like a zombie if you have enough of that stuff, and uh, is, you know, sil- silver is toxic. Is that why Jim Baker turned blue or was turning blue there for a while? Uh, I don't know if he yeah. really. Yeah, yeah did he come back from I, that? I don't know if that's one of the reasons. I, I honestly, Jim Baker, Jim Baker should be back in jail. I say back. In jail. <laughs> yeah, so, well, he's been hawking his his cure for the COVID, right? Oh, I mean, I, I, they shouldn't have gotten away with that. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He was always hawking something. And yeah, I remember him, uh, he was trying to sell a this post-apocalyptic water bottle thing um, that was supposedly able mm. to prevent radiation from getting in the water or something like that. And as someone who spent eight years on nuclear submarines with, you know, with I have to say, potentially nuclear weapons, because you can't really confirm it. You know, radiation was just a part of life, and you had to become very understanding of how the process of radiation works. And mm. listening to this idiot hawk this stuff, you're just sitting there going, like, that is not how that works. Yeah. That is, you know, it, it, ugh. Yeah. It was, it was painful to listen to, and and seeing these people just eat it up. I mean, oh. I think that's kind of the point, isn't it? That this that they're demonstrating, the, that especially people like him, have demonstrated that people will believe anything. They will buy anything when in, in, induced. I want to say um, through through their religion to do so. Jehovah's Witnesses are an ex- excellent example. 
of how this, but as a matter of fact, those angels of death he described, isn't that creepy? I had no idea that they did, they did that. They will, they will follow you or your injured loved one to the hospital to make sure you don't break that blood transfusion law. Yeah, isn't there's even a chap- there's even a chapter on it in my video. I show the chapter in the elders manual. It's a secret elders manual that only elders get to read, and it basically gives them instructions on how to involve themselves in. Um, very intimate medical situations involving blood. It's very disturbing. I believe sick. Yeah, that's. I, I would describe yeah. that as sick. Very yeah. sick in our modern times. How they people get away with that stuff? It's crazy. Well, you know what, guys? We've reached the hour. I want to take a moment and thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel, again for getting up. Maybe what we ought to do is we ought. I, I've threatened to do this before. We should pre-record a little news, a little sciencey something. And uh, let you sleep in and just run your pre-recorded science thing. It might be easier on you on these days. Right? Yeah. You're down. <laughs> There's one yeah. you're having to get up at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> That's right. You know. Yeah. I ask you during the week. You're like, no, nah, I want to be there live. But the day of the show, it's a little different. <laughs> Lloyd, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate you. The Reluctant Apostate, your book. Got books, channels. Uh, I've got some of your stuff listed down below. Please go follow his stuff, buy his book if you haven't already. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I am off to save the world. I hope you have a great week because it is Monday. Thank you to everybody in the chat. The damn nation, you guys are wonderful. Thank you to everybody on Facebook and that YouTube reviewer who has to watch every one of my shows. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe. We will see you tomorrow with the comedian um, Andy Hall. I don't remember who our guest is tomorrow because I'm a bad person. I forget stuff like that. But tomorrow, Andy Hall right here. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye. Thank you for watching the show. A special shout out to my gold level Patreon supporters, the Blazing Wizard Pope, Ian Davenport, Cindy Plaza, and tons of mice. Thank you and have a great day.